let's take a look at a product that promises to add weathering and aging effects to your minis in one simple step. Today, it's Dirty Down. Hey there, Philip here from Manning the Fort. No direct camera shots today for a variety of reasons, but I wanted to cover a product that I finally decided to try after hearing its praises sung for at least a year at this point. Part of the reason I waited so long to try these is that they were pretty hard to come by for a while, but it looks like that issue has been largely resolved. Dirty Down is a line of water-soluble washes that claim to be able to add realistic-looking rust, verdigris, and moss with a very simple process. If you've watched any of my previous hobby videos, you know I'm a fan of making models look battle-worn, and I'm a fan of simple processes, so these should be right up my alley. Now, I paid $13 per 25 milliliter bottle for these. Note that if you go to places like eBay and Amazon, they tend to sell for a lot more. More on that later, though. To give these a look, I decided to try three different application methods. The Rust is the most popular, and I think it was the first one of these released. To test it out, I took a Kill Team barricade that I'd painted with a mix of Viejo metal color, Duraluminum, and gunmetal. I applied the dirty down rust in much the same way as I typically use oil washes. That's to say I just kind of slapped it all over the place. Then I cleaned up some spots. Since dirty down is water soluble, I took a clean brush, dipped it in clean water, then went back over some of the high points to leave most of the rust in the areas where it looks like water would naturally settle on the barricade. Now, while the water took most of the rust off from the high points, it did take a dry wipe down to get it close to the original metallic color. I also went back and reapplied the rust to particularly recessed areas, as the product's visual effect is supposed to change with a second application. Left alone, Dirty Down is meant to dry in 1-5 to five minutes. I ended up blow-drying it to allow reapplication to the deeper areas, and it worked fine. That said, it is a good time to mention that while Dirty Down is water-soluble, it is solvent-based. I couldn't tell by the smell what the solvent is, and I couldn't find it listed on the company's website, but according to the bottle, it's flammable, and I'm willing to bet it's pretty toxic as well, so don't go licking your brushes after you use it. Overall, I was quite pleased with how well an admittedly sloppy application of the Dirty Down Rust did on this barricade. A lot of my sci-fi terrain has a sort of abandoned settlement vibe, and I can definitely see using this a lot on various pieces. As for actual miniatures, I don't use a ton of rust, but it could be fun to use when I revisit the Cursed City Undead in the future. In fact, spoiler alert, I think all three of these products will get used in that project. Next, I gave the Verdigris a try. This was the one I was potentially most excited about because I plan on painting up my Mezgeik Mini's Plague Marines proxies with a lot of copper and brass. The bottle for Dirty Down says it can be used in an airbrush, so I decided to give that a try. I didn't want to use any acrylic thinners because I wasn't sure how they'd react with the solvent, so I added a bit of water and sprayed it onto this big statue that I'd previously covered with Vallejo Metal Color Gold, which, as you can see, has a more brassy color straight from the bottle. Now, if you're going to use Dirty Down out of an airbrush, I recommend using one with at least a 0.5mm nozzle. I used my Badger Patriot 105, which is my workhorse, but I had a 0.3mm conversion kit on it, and this stuff liked to clog up a lot during the process. Still, the thinned, dirty down settled pretty easily into the recesses, which is what I wanted. Like with the barricade, I used water to clean off the higher areas, dried it, then resprayed some areas to double down on the effect. Now, because I had to use a lot of water to get it to go through the airbrush, I think I lost some of the depth of the effect. This is one I'll definitely be revisiting with a standard brush method for my actual minis. Still, it looks pretty good on a piece of terrain, and it just took a few minutes. When it came to the moss, I decided to take a little more time with both the base paint job and the application of Dirty Down. I printed up a base that I thought would go well with Cursed City, so paving stones and a stone building with lots of nooks, crannies, and outcrops. I started off by painting the whole thing in Pro Acryl Neutral Gray, then dry brushing that with bright warm gray and just a little ivory. By the way, Pro Acryl is easily my current favorite paint brand for most things, and I have a discount code in the description if you want to give them a try. After the acrylics dried, I gave the base an all-over wash with Abtalung 502's Starship Filth. It's a nice green-gray that does really nicely for making things, well, filthy. Once I cleaned that up and let it cure, I went in with a targeted application of the Dirty Down Moss. This is where I really got to test the ability to feather and blend the product, and I have to say, 
I was very impressed. The Moss was the product that I was least excited about at the start of this test, and it ended up being the one I'm most excited to use again. I have oil washes that can do verdigris, and I have enamel washes and stippling methods that can do rust, albeit a lot more slowly than this stuff. This Moss, though? I just don't have an easy alternative, especially not one that goes on this quickly and looks this good. I can see this working really well on all sorts of bases and terrain, and once I get around to painting Groot for Marvel Crisis Protocol, it may show up there too. Let's visit some lessons and things I might do differently next time I use these. I'm really excited to try the rust and moss in particular over a textured surface. Now, whether that's achieved using something like Monument Hobby's Texture Paste, Citadel Texture Paint, or a plastic putty, I think giving a rough surface for these to cling to is going to help a lot. The base I used the moss with had the most texture to it out of the printer, and I think that helped a lot with how well it ended up adhering and the subtle depth of the final color. Also, like I said earlier, while Dirty Down can be used with an airbrush, I'm not sure I'm going to do it that way again. The nozzle width you need to keep your brush from clogging makes it really difficult to control the area where the final product ends up, and the dilution with water affects the final color pretty significantly. Finally, this is one of those products I would not recommend going to Amazon for. I thought about putting in some Amazon affiliate links to make a few Bezos bucks, but all the listings I found cost at least double what I paid when accounting for shipping. I bought these from Artis Opus for $13 a bottle, plus a few dollars in international shipping. Uh, despite coming from the UK, it only took a little more than a week for them to arrive in rural Alaska. If you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like. If you want to help me pay for products to test in the future, I do have a Patreon, which is linked below. A big thank you to my current patrons, Bob Manias and Sean Turpin. Now, Dirty Down won't be replacing oil washes for me, but they do add a nice new tool to the toolbox for Grimdark Minis. It goes great with games like Forbidden Psalm, which I reviewed in the video linked on the screen now. Until next time, remember, it's just paint, and thanks for watching.